So the goal of this video is to walk you through the magnitudes of electrical units and what's typical in what you're going to see in the labs for this course and the robot you're building. Again, especially for the mechanical engineers, you might have a good intuition at this point for how much is a kilogram, how fast is a meter per second, how much is a change of 10 degrees Celsius, but electrical units, you might not really have that intuition for how much is a volt, how much is an amp, you know, is that a lot? Is it way off target? And where this intuition can be useful is in two places. One is when you are doing calculations to just to know if the result of your calculation is in the ballpark kind of sanity check right area. If you get that you have 100 mega amps flowing through your LED, then something is probably way off. And when you are taking measurements in lab with your oscilloscope and your multimeter to make sure you are interpreting the units correctly. So there's those different unit settings on the multimeter dial. The oscilloscope screen has divisions that you have to interpret um, to get the magnitude of the graphs. So if you know what to expect, that kind of helps you do a sanity check for, okay, I'm interpreting this right, that reading is in the right range. So we're kind of going to go through each quantity one at a time here, and I'll just briefly talk about and what are typical values, what's a lot, what's a little. And then this completed table is also just available as a PDF on Canvas if you just want that as a reference. So first for voltage, measured in volts. Typical voltages you're going to see should be on the order of 1 to 5 volts. So a, a single AA battery is 1.5 volts. A USB port provides 5 volts. Your Arduino, the regulated output voltage from that is 5 volts. You might see things a little higher than this. So when you put four AA batteries in series, that actually gives you 6 volts. In one of the labs, you're going to be using the powered breadboard, which has plus and minus 15 volt power supplies. But you probably shouldn't see anything outside that range. So things in the millivolt range, fraction, when we're talking fractions of a volt and decimal places, that's kind of on the eh, a little, we don't really care all that much end of the spectrum. And then a lot, um, a wall outlet provides 120 volts, so we're not plugging anything directly into a wall outlet, or if it is, there is a, an adapter that brings the voltage down to the lower voltages, like what powers your Arduino, or for really big things, so power plants, high, um, high voltage, long distance um, transmission lines for electricity, then we're talking about kilovolts, but that, that's totally out of the realm of what we'd be doing in this class. For current, so th this is where the, the prefixes start to shift around because it turns out that an amp is actually pretty big. So you notice that your multimeter actually can't measure more than 10 amps of current. The most you would probably see, for example, for your robot is a single stalled motor can get up pretty close to an amp. So if you're talking two motors or you have an extra motor on your robot for some reason, maybe you're talking about a few amps of maximum current draw with your motors. But smaller things are in the milliamp range, so tens of milliamps for an LED, maybe closer to 100, a little under 100 milliamps for a motor with no load on it. So when you're measuring current, you're usually talking in the milliamp range, not up in the amps. And then again, kind of on the, the really tiny, we don't care about it, and things, things in the microamps are smaller than that. We usually don't really care. For resistors, maybe the typical range is a little bigger, so your breadboard kit has those resistors that are all between about 30 and 100 ohms that you're going to use in series with an LED. It is pretty common to see kilo ohm resistors or tens of kilo ohms. We'll talk about pull up and pull down resistors later in the semester. Those are usually 10 kilo ohms. When you get up into the mega ohm range, that's usually really big. That's where we will start to say, as with the practical versus ideal multimeter example, we'll say, yeah, the multimeter has an input resistance of a mega ohm or 10 mega ohms but that's so big we're just kind of going to consider it to be infinity and assume there's a neg negligible amount of current flowing in there and on the other end of the spectrum things down in the milli ohm range or less than that individual jumper wires cables things where it's just kind of a, a copper metal conductor and we're treating that resistance as negligible we don't really care about it if it's less than an ohm or half ohm or so for power, so power is voltage times current. Again, for typical values, 
could see things in the watts range when we're talking about motors or something like a cell phone charger. Five to so a typical cell phone charger running off a USB port is going to be five volts, taking at least an amp. The newer fast chargers, or for something bigger like a tablet, is going to be more like two amps. So you're looking at five to ten watts for a cell phone charger. Also, regular size LED light bulbs are usually about 10 watts now. And again, smaller things like an LED, if you do P equals IV, you're going to get more in the, the milliwatt range. So depending on what you're measuring there, we could see power in the milliwatts up to a few watts. When you start getting up into the hundreds or thousands of watts, then you're talking about larger appliances. So all your household appliances, microwave, dishwasher, electric dryer, that kind of thing, things that are really drawing a lot of electricity, that's up in the kilowatts. Older incandescent light bulbs, the bright bulbs would be 100 or 150 watts, but obviously LED bulbs now take much less um, power than that. And then again, down on the lower side of things, so things in the microwatts, again, are kind of negligible for what we're usually caring about here. Capacitance and inductance don't matter as much. We're not going to be dealing with them as frequently. But again, in both cases, capacitance is measured in farads. A farad is really big, so the little capacitors you're going to see in your kit on your lab bench are usually in the nanofarad or picofarad range, so getting pretty tiny there again with the prefixes are kind of different on the different units here. Pico is pretty small, but you know we're not getting down to femto or atto farads. I had to go look that up because I couldn't even remember what came after femto. So... You're not going to see capacitors that tiny, but you will see nano or pico pretty frequently because a, a farad is very large. Similarly, with inductance, a hent measured in henrys, a henry is pretty big. So when we were talking about larger motors, we could get up above a henry. But for motors the size you are going to be using for your robot, we're talking more about millihenrys, maybe tens of millihenrys. And for a tiny little inductor, so just a little coil of wire you can plug into a breadboard, we're talking more about microhenry range. And then again, down on the end, we don't care about nanohenries or smaller than that, not really going to be a concern. So again, hopefully this is useful. When you're doing things in lab, taking measurements or doing calculations, odds are you are going to be looking at things kind of in that middle column. If you're getting things that are really off on the extremes and the right or the left columns, then odds are you're interpreting your measurement wrong or you're making something's off by a decimal place or a factor of 10 or something like that in one of your calculations.